Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. Welcome to The Advocate. Is it me or does it feel like we're being spoiled for choice on topics to advocate on? There's so much going on this year. I'll be diagnosing a root cause of the casualties from a seasonal intruder, Lassa fever, no less. My diagnosis, a casual attitude. Bolahan takes a more empathic look at the casualties of domestic violence using Mariam Sander account as a case study. Chuka is definitely on the side of the casualties of the habitual slum evictions. He is appalled at what he terms a lazy act of wickedness. Libros presents a transparent assessment of the recent report by Transparency International and essentially says, wrestle with the message, don't shoot the messenger. Uche crowns this edition by speaking out on behalf of the casualties of human trafficking. She unveils the realities of a world that some of us may be encountering for the first time. It would seem that today is a day for speaking out for the casualties of injustice. What day isn't, I hear you say? Well, we're certainly equal to the task after the break. It shouldn't come as a surprise that the root of reoccurring, a reoccurring problem can often be traced to the attitude of those who are affected by it. A casual attitude leads to casualties, that's what I'm talking about. We're barely into the new year and it's clear to me that what this year's mantra ought to be is prevention is better than cure. We seem to be a nation of risk takers. We play Russian roulette with our lives, our resources, our time. We abdicate responsibility at the slightest opportunity. We blame government, we blame God, we blame our genes. Then along comes Lassa fever and exposes our casual unpreparedness for what it is. Yes, Lassa fever was first diagnosed in 1969 and recently it has been a yearly visitor. Some would say it has graduated from being a visitor to being a returning native. And yet it doesn't fail to catch us unprepared, claiming 115 lives last year. And already, well, 40 at the last count this year with 258 diagnosed cases. Should somebody not be made to answer for this casual tragedy? Whether the Minister of Agric Agriculture or the Health Ministers, somebody. It doesn't help matters that we, the citizens, are very much at home with a culture of risk normalization. A media awareness campaign on Lassa fever discussed the possibility of contracting Lassa fever from roadside foods such as Akara and Suya, wrapped in newspapers, which may have rodents riding roughshod over them. Let's not be casual with our lives, please. Simple measures such as basic hygiene, wash your hands before eating, fumigate your environment, store dry food grains above ground level or even in airtight con containers, and be aware of the environment you obtain your food materials from. There's always something each of us can do, no matter how small. Remember, a casual attitude will inevitably lead to casualties. We can forward the message on what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, please no, forward it. You're, you're absolutely right, um, Akene. I really do agree with you. We're very casual about these things. But I think the reason we're that casual is because it doesn't, Lassa fever doesn't really affect the rich. Oh, really? doesn't really affect, yeah, because you're not, you know, from what I understand, it's often, am I right? Or am yeah, I, no, yeah, no, um, you know, from what I understand, it's often in the poorer areas and all of that. Okay. So because Lassa fever doesn't affect the rich, or, you know, the politicians or whatever, they're not gonna bother themselves about it, you know, so they're just gonna leave it. In fact, it's like population control, in a sense. Wow. Yeah, in a sense, because, you know, let, let them, I mean, isn't that then, what they're doing with us? We, uh, mm. we, when it comes, mm. there's always budget, mm. opportunity for something. For something, yeah. You know, so when you hear that countries are preventing malaria, 
mosquitoes. Even Rwanda recently, you know, are using drones to spray mosquito infested areas. Mm -hmm. And here we are. It's from 1969 to date, a yearly, like you have said, a yearly mm. recurring pro uh, uh, problem. And yet we still cannot put our finger on it. It's okay. Rather than wait for it to reoccur, this is how we can eradicate. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's quite unfortunate for me. Uh, but, like you have said, I like the parts, you know, where you educated the mm. people. You know, mind what you eat, mm -hmm. where you're eating it from. And uh, with all of this, we can all, you know, be careful so as to avoid it, including those people at the grassroots. But government owes us a higher responsibility. No, no, they, do. Reality, they do. How much education can a Kenya do on, on a part? But the government has access and has the reach. Okay. And the, the, this is also a public health issue. Correct. It is. So the education, the awareness, all this need to come from the government. Mm. And it's when the people are well aware and they are prepared that they can actually prevent. Otherwise, with the kind of environment we still live in, in most part, especially the urban centers, um, mm. the vector has a place to breed. Mm. And this thing can keep repeating itself. Mm. Mm. And I mean, sorry, um, it's about dirty environments and uh -huh. everything, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So why is, you know, this, Not this just is dirty really... environment, it's architecture. No. <laughs> it's architecture. So, <laughs> but, but yes, really, yeah, it's design. Yeah, it because be. we have drainages, yeah. open yeah. drainages, yeah. Yeah. rats yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So, it's um, the, in the end, it's still it's still cleanliness. Yes. Because, uh, but it's just that homes should be homes should be designed in such a way that it makes people want to keep them clean. Mm. Yeah. I think that's basically what it is. Like mm. human behavior being um, influenced by how you know what environment you've been given mm -hmm. um, to you know. But um, I think the thing is, we were able to deal with Ebola, with Ebola yes. right? So why is Lassa fever? I don't know. I think we're so, so casual. We, we can answer the question. Okay, the rich. <laughs> we're able to deal with it anyway, because yes. for Ebola, it, it, it everybody was at risk. Everybody but was you know at what? Risk. Someone told me, um, one, a doctor who is doing awareness on it, he actually explained that the rats that yeah. go over the grains, where they dry the grains, yeah. is the same gary you buy mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the market. So it's not that you're you in uh, wherever you live, I don't know, the high brow area, yeah, Banana yes, Island. You buy, you you buy you that make your own gary. It will still come to you. Because <laughs> no. I was thinking we don't have rats where I live, yeah, but, but yeah. the gary is coming to you. The difference is with less of people, you're meant to cook it. Yeah, but you know, people drink gary. Yes. Okay, the rich don't drink gary. No, no, no. No, I think. Even if you really drink, do. it's wow. quite, it's, it's <laughs> not as, you're not going to really find that many rich people soaking Gary with you like that. the side and really going for it. It's students, <laughs> oh, where, gosh. You know, students <laughs> in boarding, I don't know boarding I'm schools not and, funny. and so on. That's where it's happening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Beans exactly. and Gary. Yeah, 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 I know when I soaked my Gary, I was You buy that you buy that one that they sell in small bags and refine them. That's really terrible. But he also said that because it's, you know, you've limited it to rodents, it's actually easier to cut off. It shouldn't be very, it's not complex. Yes. You know, I agree with you mm -hmm. that these are ways of drawing the attention of the politicians to the fact that don't sit down there and think it will get to you. Mm -hmm. You know, one way or the other, it will get to you yes. or somebody yeah. that you know. Yes. And, and truly, they should know that if you do not cop the menace now, it will get to you mm -hmm. one way or the other. Eventually. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, I'm glad the CIA part was mentioned. Yeah. Because that, that's, Aha, where, yes. that's where it's crossover. It's a crossover, it's a crossover <laughs> yeah. Exactly, so, with the newspaper, so in fact, right? I'm so like, glad. Like the bushmeat, you know, Ebola. Luckily, I avoid bushmeat. But I like that because me personally, I mean, that's where they'll get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. And, and eating out, I mean, eating street food. So you won't really do it. Someone said they'll take no, their container. All of it. They won't take, they won't let them put it in the I'm avoiding all of it, just like my life Chinese I think the casual part of the, the casual casualization of mm. the event in itself shows a cultural problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because even in incidences of fire, which cuts across yes. and is prevalent, in the markets, you see trend... situations in which fire happens, an entire state capital will not have a functional oh. fire. Mm. Like Balogun, yes, you know, recently. You know, mm. I, I learned that even the firemen were well, they, they did a bit of work yesterday mm. but it could mm. have also been otherwise mm. right so we tend to casualize almost everything but even though no, we're not aware we're not aware yeah and i mean the biggest we're problem not, i'm not, having with this whole <laughs> thing is that lassa fever like you said visits every single yeah. year you know it's coming and and we haven't even gotten on top of that yeah now we're expecting coronavirus to we're to, hoping to it won't come, come near us we're not ready because we know that yeah. if, if we have all kinds of fever people even know when lassa fever tends to come around this hamatan season that's when it peaks because for whatever reason it's more conducive for the root and so By we even now, roughly know eradicated malaria yeah well ned walker was yeah. saying how he wanted to get spray the whole, uh, spray the whole and people were laughing at him but yeah. i don't really at least think, he's thinking yeah, at least he's thinking <laughs> mm. well 
taking responsibility for our role in preventing a problem that affects us all is a good first step to solving it. After the break, Bolaho draws our attention to the pathetic side of justice. Over to you, Bolaho. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize. 